Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful day, another beautiful day that the Lord has made. Um, I welcome you to the beautiful sanctuary of First Presbyterian Church for folks here um, and folks online. So welcome to worship. We have a few announcements today um, on this September uh, 12th. Uh, a thank you to folks. Um, Naomi turned 106 and um, folks came out and celebrated her and Ruth Ann wanted to say thank you. Um, so a thank you from Ruth Ann um, for showing love to Naomi. And, and Naomi wanted to say thank you too, I should say. <laughs> so she really enjoyed that. It was a real blessing. Um, a lot of fun to celebrate her 106th birthday. Um, and before I mention the choir rehearsals, Harriet Spillman turned 101 this on the 8th and I will see her tomorrow so there's I laugh and say there's something in the water but um, it's something good so um, thanks be to God for that what another joy our choir rehearsals have begun again they met this past Wednesday um, yes uh, Elizabeth is uh, modeling the new choir masks so that our choirs um, have uh, 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 the comfort of, and, and so does Pat. Um, they, they're just a little different in structure to allow people to sing and allow some comfort for that. So um, that's a blessing. And if you are also interested in handbell choir, we are going to begin our handbell choir on the 22nd. Um, and do you have a choir rehearsal today? No. So, you, so anybody who is here who wants to sing with a choir can stay today. So right after some, some coffee. Um, remind me to say something about that too. So choir rehearsals and bells, it's, it's such a joy. We're so glad to have that beginning again. Um, because we are beginning again. Um, we're looking at the fall. Every fall we try to have a comeback, um, a, a kickoff Sunday. And um, that is our, we're scheduling next Sunday as our, our sort of kickoff comeback Sunday. Um, we hope folks will feel comfortable. Again, more folks coming to worship. We're so glad if you worship online or, or physically here. We are going to um, do a commissioning of our blessing box outside. Friends, the food that we have been putting in that mini pantry has been just disappearing. So the mission team has sort of had a, its own little dry run as we get this blessing box that is sitting out in our garden going. And next Sunday, there will be ways for you to sign up to help keep that blessing box and help our neighbors be fed. This is part of our, our year-long effort in our mission to help feed the hungry. And we're really trying to make a concerted effort with that. So, um, Next announcements. On September 26th, uh, right after service, pretty much after service, at 11.45 to 12.45, our session will once again be holding a listening session. Um, it will be, um, and our session is our, our board of directors, our elders who help uh, guide the, the life of the church. Um, Reverend Nikki uh, from our COM Committee on Ministry Liaison will be there to help facilitate that conversation. And the session really wants to hear any concerns, hopes, uh, feedback that you have to give them. So um, please know that you are welcome and that the session wants to listen and hear. Oh, friends, there have uh, been so many... Uh, notes of disaster in our world in the coming in the past few weeks and so we again um, encourage anybody who would like to help our denomination um, our church touch the lives of people in disaster areas um, we have given to the presbyterian disaster association assistance um, pda and uh it's a wonderful organization that is on the ground really helping people. So uh, we, we keep folks in Haiti and Afghanistan and Tennessee and just uh, New Orleans. I hope I'm not missing anything in our prayers. And that's one way that we reach out. So wanted to lift that up. And I believe that that is the end of our announcements this morning. 
Have I missed anything that folks would like to lift up? I do want to mention that if you are physically here, unfortunately, if you're not physically here, you cannot join us. But we have, once again, we have been trying to use the one little bit of outdoor space that we have. Um, there's a little nook here on this side of the building where you're invited to stay for coffee and conversation after worship. So please know you are welcome. With those announcements made, I want to invite you to bring all that you are now to this time of worship when we turn our attention to the love and grace of our Creator. Will you join your hearts and your voices with mine? If you have this morning's bulletin with you, you will see our call to worship. And if your voices will speak the words in bold, we together will hear God's call to us to worship. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Today we choose to rejoice. Today we choose to worship and give thanks. Seek the peace of God that will guard our, your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Today we choose God's peace. Today we lift our prayers and place our trust in God. Turn your hearts away from the distractions and disappointments of life. Fix your attention on things above and worship the Lord you, who loves you and cares for you. We come to worship God who hears our prayers and offers us peace. Friends, we begin our worship in praise of God, and then our first prayer that we lift up to our merciful God is a prayer of confession. We speak it together, knowing that each and every one of us have fallen short of the glory of God and of being who God has called us to be. And so I invite you 
trusting in God's mercy and grace to join your voices with mine in this prayer. And then in quiet, lift up your personal confessions to God. Let us pray. Our Father, help us to live each day with faith and hope and love. Make us patient and compassionate with one another in the fret and jar of life, remembering that each of us fights a hard fight and walks a lonely way. Forgive us, Lord, if we hurt our fellow souls. Teach us a gentler tone, a sweeter charity of words, and a more healing touch. Sustain us, O oh God, when we must face sorrow. Give us courage for the day and hope for tomorrow. Amen. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. And Christ rose for us. And Christ reigns in power for us. And Christ prays for us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free by God's generous grace. Alleluia. Join me today as we listen to God's word. St. Paul writes to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 6 to 9. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence in there, in, is, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and in the God of peace will be with you.
choir from California singing for us the prayer of St. Francis, make me a channel of your peace. Giovanni Francesco Bernardon, I don't know how my Italian is, um, was born in Italy, in Assisi, in 1182. He was the son of a wealthy merchant and renowned for drinking and partying in his youth. St. Francis of Assisi. In 1202, he marched off as a soldier in a battle uh, against a rival city because there, were internal, there was internal strife there in Italy at the time. And he was taken prisoner. And he was in prison for a year while he waited for his father to pay ransom because his father was a wealthy merchant. And it took a whole year for his father to get that ransom together. So this young man, um, known for his drinking and partying, for being a soldier, had a transformation when he came home. His body and soul had to heal from the trauma that he had experienced, and it took a whole year, a year for him to recover. And as he was recovering, he began to have visions and hear the voice of Christ. One day it said that he was praying in an old dilapidated church. And he, he heard the voice of God say to him, Go repair my house, house, which as you can see is falling to ruin. And Francis understood that he was being called to repair the physical structure of the church. But later in life he also understood that he was being called to help repair the church in a much bigger and broader way. Christ gave Giovanni a new vision for living. And Francis turned away from his life of wealth to take on a life of simplicity. He saw the love of God in nature and animals. Simplicity and poverty. He dedicated his life to preaching the love of Jesus Christ. The Christian church at the time was tremendously rich, and the people in it, including the priests, um, were living scandalous lives. So Francis started an order of friars that we know as the Franciscans, who lived completely the opposite, renouncing wealth and serving the poor. The song we just listened to is based on a text that is usually called the Prayer of St. Francis, as I called it. A peace prayer, a simple prayer for peace. Make me an instrument of your peace. It's a widely known Christian prayer. And I have to give you a little bit of a warning. St. Francis did not actually write it. It can be traced back to 1912 to, of all things, a small spiritual publication called The Little Bell. I can't help but think of it as a newsletter. You know, we have soundings. Every church I know has a newsletter. So this church in Paris, this Catholic church, had this, uh, this publication called The Little Bell. And in 1912, that prayer, that text, was written in it. And it will not surprise you that this simple prayer was translated from that original French. And during World War I and World War II, those simple words traveled around the world. This prayer has frequently been set to music, quoted by prominent leaders, and used by various religious communities because its language is so broad and inclusive. Lord, make me a channel of your peace. Make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. 
where there's sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Of course it makes sense that that simple, beautiful prayer would speak to to the world during times of war. And speak so powerfully that, and this was before social media, these, weren't, these words weren't being tweeted or, or put on people's Facebook pages. They were being shared on the back of, of worship cards. And that's one of the ways that folks think that maybe it got connected with St. Francis because a Franciscan um, uh, friar put it on the back of, of his church's card, a religious card, with a picture of St. Francis on the other side from a a little newsletter to a prayer known around the world. This prayer is a request that God will grant you and I peace. But so much peace that it would overflow into the world around us. This prayer is a plea that we might offer faith in response to times in life when it is particularly easy to lose hope. Can anyone resonate with that? To lift up a prayer of a vision of a different way of living, living peace when there is no peace around us. I turn to this prayer, especially this weekend, Yesterday was the 20th anniversary of the attacks on the U.S. soil on September 11th. All week long, I have heard services of remembrance were held. Flags have been lowered at half-staff. People have been remembering where they were those 20 years ago. Prayers for remembrance and healing and peace have been lifted. There's never a wrong time to pray for peace. But today is a particularly meaningful day to consider what it means to live with Christ as our peace. As the source of our peace and as our motivation to share peace with others. And that's what today's scripture was about that we heard read. A prayer of peace written by the Apostle Paul also an unlikely peacemaker. Do you remember Paul's history? Paul was born Saul of Tarsus. He was an educated and committed Jew from a family of Pharisees. He was a Roman citizen. He had respect and influence in his community. And when this new, this new movement Um, was rising up around him in Jerusalem, he, saw was deeply offended by the claims of this group that their rabbi was actually the son of God. He was so offended that Saul was violently opposed to that movement. He led the persecution of early Christians. Saul of Tarsus. And then... One day on the road, as God often does in the middle of our lives, on the road to Damascus, Saul had a vision. And according to the book of Acts, Saul heard the voice of God say, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul asked, who are you, Lord? And the reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Have you ever had an experience, a divine experience that transformed who you are? It may not always be a voice from heaven. It may not be a vision. But God can break into our lives and call our attention and change our orientation for where we're headed in life. 
That day Saul was transformed and his name was changed. Scripture does that often. Changes a name to show us that the internal life of the person was changed. Saul becomes Paul. And Paul leaves violence behind. He leaves his entire world behind. And he becomes a leading missionary of that group of people that he persecuted. He becomes an advocate for the expansion and inclusion of the Christian faith to welcome Gentiles. He works for the ministry of love and reconciliation. What a transformation. And the irony is that pretty soon he finds himself being persecuted. He's the one who is being accused of bringing Gentiles into the temple and defiling the temple. And so he is arrested by his community and put into house arrest. No longer able to travel, he begins to write letters. And that's what we heard today. A letter from Paul to the Philippians. Saying, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. If I asked people here who had worries to raise their hand, I would guess that we would all raise our hands. And Paul says, do not worry. Bring your worries to God in prayer. Tell God what you need and thank God for all that you have. And you too will be turned around. And you too will be transformed. And God's peace will come to you. God's peace will guard your hearts and minds if you live with Christ in your heart. While he was a prisoner, he tells the disciples, he tells us, don't be anxious. Trust in the peace of God. If you let yourself trust in something bigger than you are, your worries will seem smaller. If you let go of your need to know and to control Just talk to God. Hand that over to God. And you can find peace. Because Jesus will guard your heart from fear and anxiety. You know, that that racing of your heart, that quickening of your breath. Christ Jesus can guard your heart from fear and anxiety. So what's Paul's advice to us? We all like advice, concrete advice. Paul says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about those things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Paul invites us to shift our perspective. That's what that is. He tells us to look for God in the world. And we will know God's peace. I find it interesting that both Paul and Francis had these life-altering visions that turned them from living a material and socially secure life to a more humble and honest and modest life. And yet they claim that it is that second humble, modest life in which they find peace. How many of us can claim that we are at peace even when the world around us is anything but peaceful? And how about being instruments of Christ's peace, of bringing that internal peace into the world? What a wondrous prayer to have. On this day after the anniversary of 9-11, I want to share a story with you. And I I thank Darcel for this story. Um, Ken Cubas died 20 years ago on 9-11. Did I say his name right? In a way, his story reminds me of all the other stories of people who showed us a glimpse of how goodness and peace can prevail, even in the face and even on days when it seems that evil and violence is at its strongest. 
Ken was the vice president at Fiduciary Trust, and he escaped the towers, the second tower, on that faithful day 20 years ago. He escaped. And in the hours after the towers crumbled, uh, Ken's wife, Carrie, got several phone calls from Ken's colleagues because Ken had helped them get out of the tower, reach them, help them to reach safety. But one caller told Ken's wife that when she saw him outside, she could tell that he was going to go back inside because he wanted to help even more people. And she begged him not to return, and he ignored those pleas. And Carrie says, I take tremendous, cons cons I take tremendous consolation, consolation in knowing that he died so nobly. He had a choice. He knew the risk he was taking, and he wasn't deterred. His nature brought him to death, and I find beauty in that. He died as he lived, helping others. Now, I don't know Ken's religious background, but I will say what I believe, that that day, that Ken and many others like him became instruments of Christ's peace. Now, Darcel knew Ken, and I thank her for this story. And as we remember him, we remember so many other people who in those hours and days afterwards helped save lives, helped families to grieve, who stepped up and helped our nation to come together in unity, resolve, and hope. Now these days we don't face the acute crisis that happened on 9-11 but we can still challenge ourselves to follow the advice of Paul, to cultivate peace within ourselves by centering on God's grace that is revealed to us in Christ Jesus. Now, I know I told you that this prayer was not actually the words of St. Francis, but it's said that he told his followers the following. As you announce peace with your mouth, make sure that you have greater peace in your hearts. Let everyone be drawn to your peace and kindness through your peace and gentleness. If that's not an invitation to be an instrument of peace, I don't know what is. Friends, I will be singing and saying this prayer of peace. And I hope you'll join me. Make me an instrument of your peace. May we all strive to be instruments of God's peace in our families, in our relationships, in our schools, in our neighborhoods, in our church, in our nation, and for this whole blessed creation. Let us pray for peace. Amen. Alleluia. I choose love. 
Will you join your hearts with us in prayer? Holy God, creator of all people and all nations, it is with sorrow that we remember the tragic events that occurred on 9-11 20 years ago. We lift to you in prayer all those who died in the Twin Towers, at the Pentagon, on, Air, on United Airlines Flight 93 in Shankville, Pennsylvania. We entrust them to your loving care. Console all who mourn this loss. We pray in the hope that all who trust in you find peace and rest in your kingdom. Give, Give us, us peace, peace, O Christ. Christ. And we pray for those who courageously responded to provide aid and comfort to the afflicted on that day. May their painful memories be healed and transformed into strength. May the example they set continue to inspire future generations to be first responders who bravely serve others. May the sacrifice of those who ran towards danger that day give us compassion for the many frontline workers who served during the pandemic. Give, Give us, us peace, peace, O Christ. Yes. We cry out to you once more this day for all places and people touched by violence and war over the past 20 years. We pray for the women and men who faithfully served on behalf of our country in Afghanistan 
and we remember the fallen who will never return home. We pray for the people of Afghanistan caught in the crossfire of conflict. God of peace, help the global community to continue to respond with compassion to those displaced by war. For all people and nations who have known the devastation of violence, we pray for peace. Give us peace, peace, O O Christ. Christ. We pray for ourselves as we seek to remember, honor, and learn from the past. By resolving to live lives that are based on respect for one another. By resolving to never settle disagreements in our lives in a violent way by resolving not to prejudge entire ethnic and religious groups based on the acts of some, by resolving that justice, not revenge, prevail in our world. Let us resolve that in the face of hatred, we will show love, that in time of despair, we will be voices of hope and creators of new dreams, that in times of darkness we will be sources of light. Let us resolve that we never regard forgiveness as weakness, but rather as a source of strength in our lives and in our world. Give us peace, Peace, O Christ. We continue to pray for those suffering inner wounds from illness, abuse, poverty, addiction. Healer, bring comfort and healing where it is possible. Bring your peace to all who are weary and overextended. Give Give us us peace, peace, O Christ. Christ. Holy God, as we at First Presbyterian Church of Easton prepare for another program year, we thank you for the ways that we have been able to worship this last year and a half This last year and a half, I'm sorry. It has been a difficult journey for the staff, leadership and congregation members and friends. May you bless all our members and friends of this church, whether we gather in person or online. We worship you, God of love, and your presence is near. Your abiding peace is the source of our resilience. Continue Continue to to give give us peace, peace, O O Christ. Christ. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day day our daily bread, and and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we take a moment for giving. The Psalms urge us to give thanks to God at all times for everything that God has provided. In gratitude, we offer to God a portion of what God has given to us, trusting that God blesses what we bring and multiplies the gifts to serve God's good purpose. Friends, if you are here in this space today, we invite you to leave your offering in the plate in the back of the sanctuary or to make your gifts online or via mail. And we thank you for your support. Let us pray. Holy God, bless the givers. Bless those who give time and talents and prayers and concern and care and financial support to others and to this church community so that we might serve you and serve our neighbors in this world. You are a generous God and we give you thanks. Amen. Alleluia.
Beloved, do what you have learned and received and seen and heard in Christ, and the peace of God will be with you. And may that peace which passes all understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Go in peace. Amen. Alleluia.